If you own a boat on the Gulf Coast or Atlantic Coast of the United States, you face the possibility of a hurricane striking during the second half of the year. Every year, an average of two hurricanes makes landfall in the United States and causes a tremendous amount of damage. But boat owners can take precautions that will reduce the likelihood of damage if you're unfortunate enough to find yourself in harm's way. Hi, I'm Chuck Hawley from West Marine, and today I'm joined by Kevin Osborne. Kevin, when it comes to advising boaters on hurricane preparedness, who are the real experts? Well, Chuck, one of the best sources of information on hurricane damage prevention is the Marine Insurance Division of Boat US. They've collected an incredible amount of information about what works and what doesn't for the last 25 years. Their hurricane catastrophe team members are frequently among the first to arrive after a hurricane has passed through, and they can observe which boats survived with little or no damage and which ones are totaled. A great source of information is our Hurricane Resource Center online at www.boatus.com slash hurricanes. Not only can you find information on how to prepare for a hurricane, but you can also track tropical storms once they start threatening the coast. Boat US also publishes this highly informative booklet, Preparing Boats and Marinas for Hurricanes, which has a wealth of information. It's available by calling the Boat US home office or it can be downloaded from the Hurricane Resource Center online. In fact, this booklet served as a resource for much of the information that we're presenting in this video. Kevin and I have boiled down a dozen pages of advice into our top 10 list for hurricane preparation. What's first on the list, Kevin? Chuck, it's vital to think about what you're going to do in case of a hurricane by creating a comprehensive plan in advance. By starting with the form that's in the hurricane booklet, you'll have all the vital information you need in one complete list. This form is also available for downloading from the Boat US Hurricane Resource Center. It covers items like where you plan to take your boat, how will your boat get moved if you're away, and a checklist of critical gear to have to minimize damage. The second item on our list is to make sure that you understand the insurance policy and your marina contract. As an example, your insurance company may pay you up to 50% of the cost of hauling or moving your boat prior to a hurricane and some marinas require that you haul your boat in advance of a storm to protect both the boat and the marina. Coordination with your marina is vital. Our third piece of advice is that if you do plan on hauling your boat, make sure you've arranged this in advance with the marina operator. The evidence is strong that boats stored on land fare better, on average, than boats kept in the water. One of the best alternatives is to store your boat on the hard. And to do that, you probably are going to be using something like these jack stands or maybe a cradle. Jack stands work really well, but you have to remember to locate the pads where there's structure inside the boat to resist the pushing force. And generally, that's where a bulkhead intersects the hull. In addition, you can see how this quarter inch chain has been run to keep the jack stands from spreading apart over time. The problem with out using the chain is that as the boat moves slightly, the jack stands will tend to walk away and the boat can capsize in a heavy breeze. In addition, we're lucky enough in this yard to have an asphalt surface so the jack stands aren't going to dig into it. But a lot of jack stands are placed on either soil or gravel or some sandy, softer material. And what happens is the force of the wind is enough to actually depress the jack stand into the surface. In that case, you want to get a big piece of plywood underneath each jack stand to keep it from depressing down into the surface. Tip number four is for boats that have to be left in the water. In that case, you'll want to choose some place that has minimal fetch. That means the waves have less distance to develop into larger and larger waves. Canals are close to ideal, since they generally allow lines to be run to both sides so the boat doesn't pound against a dock. Hurricane holes also provide protection since they are completely enclosed. Remember, the wind direction is going to veer as the storm passes by, so make sure that you're protected from a wide range of wind angles. Tip number five concerns boats that are tied to docks or pilings. If you're making your lines fast to fix docks or pilings that don't float with the tide or surge, you'll need to use long lines so that your boat can float up as the water height increases. Lines that are too short can break, or in some cases can actually pull pilings out of the bottom. You'll also want to reduce windage by orienting your boat bow to to the anticipated storm direction, which may be different than how you normally tie up. If you're in a marina that uses floating docks, you have to make sure that the pilings are tall enough to withstand the storm surge. In this case, we're at a relatively low tide, and you can see this piling is probably about 10 feet high. At high tide, it's only 6 feet high, and the storm surge can easily be 10 or 12 or 15 feet. 
In that case, the entire dock assembly will float off the tops of the pilings and you'll be a raft with everybody else in your harbor. So in that case, the marina either has to put in taller pilings or you have to get your boat out of the water and put it on land where it's safer. Boats on moorings face special challenges. Most mooring anchors can handle squalls and storms, but hurricanes place an extraordinary load on the anchor and anchor road. The best anchors are helix types, which screw into the seabed. They are much more effective than mushroom or deadweight anchors. According to tests done by Boat US and Cruising World magazine, mushroom anchors held about two and a half times their dry weight, while concrete anchors held about half of their dry weight. Helix anchors held between 12,000 and 20,000 pounds and were unable to be pulled free. A problem with mushroom anchors is that they may have taken a set during the season in the prevailing wind direction, but the hurricane may be out of an entirely different direction. So obviously one other thing to consider, um, if you're not going to be keeping the boat at the dock with a, an eminent hurricane and you're gonna be out mooring or anchoring is the size of your ground tackle. So uh, if you're going to be anchoring, you don't want to be using a lunch hook. You want to be using something that's adequate um, for the load that the boat's going to be taking. So make sure that your anchor is appropriately sized. One other thing to consider if you're going to be using a mooring pennant is the condition of your current pennant um, or the op option for upgrading to a really high quality pennant like this one from New England Ropes. Uh, this one uh, is a double braid construction but has a tough uh, polyester outer cover which is highly abrasion resistant, also has a marine tech coating embedded in it, um, also has a nylon inner core to provide maximum stretch. So it's really ideal um, for a hurricane situation. It's also a really large pennant so it can handle enormous loads. Um, the other advantage to a pennant like this is it does have a, uh, a movable chafe guard so that you can slide it uh, to position it right through your skein shocks to provide some additional abrasion resistance. Um, and it's got a really good quality splice, um, nicely whipped um, in a long net. If you have to anchor out, select your location so that there is little fetch as possible to reduce the size of the waves. You should consider using multiple anchors, either set in tandem, one anchor connected to another anchor with chain, or in multiple directions. If you have two large anchors, set them apart approximately 90 degrees in the direction of the anticipated winds. Three anchors can be set 120 degrees apart and led to a single swivel and line leading to the vessel's bow. This is especially effective if the room available is tight and you need to reduce the swinging radius of the vessel. This isn't a time to use your old ratty lines as anchor lines, mooring pennants, or dock lines. A recent test by Practical Sailor magazine found that old lines had lost from 49 to 75 percent of their strength due to a lack of lubricity and the addition of dirt, salt, and chafe. So a hurricane can exert an enormous amount of force on a boat that is moored or anchored. It's a good time to use new lines or lines that are in really good condition and probably lines that are bigger than you're used to using. As with any docking, you, can use, you should use nylon line to uh, maximize the elasticity. And you can use three-strand line like this, or you can use some heavy double-braided line like this. You know, chafe is really the enemy here, and even though the line is unlikely to break in the middle, it can certainly chafe through. So the use of chain to absorb the chafe into uh, contact surfaces so that you don't wear through the nylon is a good idea. So for example, putting a loop of chain around a cleat, or, or actually running the chain through the center of the cleat, can give you a surface which is flexible, but won't wear through. You can also splice, just like you would with an anchor line, you can splice a thimble to a piece of nylon line and run the chain through it. And that way you end up with a very chafe-free protection. There are also a number of other items that you can do, use to reduce chafe. Uh, these are polyester covers made by Taylor with a little Velcro cover. You can tie them in place put these over the line where it goes over around a cleat or over a gunnel or over a roller. They'll pre prevent chafe. There are also these that are made out of leather by Sea Dog. You just put them around the line and stitch them up. It takes a couple of minutes and the leather is very, very abrasion resistant. Here's another style. This again can be moved to wherever you need it. It's heavy polyester and uh, will provide quite a bit of wearing before you even get close to the line. 
And one thing that you might want to consider is the use of mooring compensators <coughs> or uh, snubbers. These install in the line and will give you additional stretch so as your boat is heaving and moving around, uh, you won't put all that strain directly on your dock lines. Regardless of where your boat weathers the storm, you should try to reduce windage to minimize the force exerted on the boat. Boat canvas, in particular, should be removed including dodgers and biminis. Furling genoas inevitably unfurl, no matter how scrupulous you've been in rolling them up or tying them up. Halyards should be tied to a small line and allowed to run to the top of the mast to reduce windage and flogging. Mainsail covers and mainsail should be removed and stowed. On power boats, cockpit enclosure should be removed. Even if additional windage doesn't cause your boat to be damaged, it's very likely that the boat canvas will be destroyed by the force of the wind and debris in the air. Our final tip is to be an educated storm tracker. As soon as the hurricane is forecast in your general area, use the Boat US Hurricane Resource Center to get the latest information on the storm track from NOAA and other agencies. And remember to prepare early. If you delay in hauling your boat or buying additional line or anchors, you may find it's too late when the storm gets close. We hope this West Advisor video on hurricane preparation has been helpful, and we also hope that you never face a situation where you have to use it. But should a hurricane warning be posted for your area, your advanced preparation and knowledge can dramatically reduce the likelihood of damage. Our thanks to the team at Boat US who have collected this information over two decades of hurricane insurance investigation. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the water.